Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Nishit Kumar and with me is Prashant Kumar Sena with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people to make khadi and handicraft products a part of their lives, says it will strengthen resolve to build Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Over 90 crore, 51 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered across the country so far, recovery rate nearing 98%. INB Minister Anurag Singh Thakur says strong leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi helped in ensuring free COVID vaccination protection to all citizens of the country. Vice President Venkaiah Naidu calls for adopting a multi-pronged strategy to address the growing incidence of cancer. Union Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakwe says India's culture, traditions and constitution has not allowed thread of unity and diversity to get weakened under any circumstances. Power Ministry promulgates Electricity Rules 2021 to regulate transmission system planning, development and recovery of interstate transmission charges. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee wins the Bhavanipur by polls. In women's cricket, one-off day and night test match between India and Australia ends in a draw in Queensland. And in IPL, Royal Challengers Bangalore beat Punjab Kings by six runs in Sharjah. Kolkata Knight Riders face Sunrisers Hyderabad in Dubai. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain Dogas Ki Duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged people to consider making khadi and handicraft products a part of their lives and strengthen the resolve to build an Atmanabhar Bharat in the festive season. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said the world's largest Khadi national flag displayed in Leh, Ladakh, is a unique tribute to Mahatma Gandhi, whose passion towards Khadi is widely known. In his Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on the 26th of last month, the Prime Minister had expressed satisfaction that the young generation is giving Khadi the place of pride that it had during the freedom struggle. Mr. Modi had said that the production of Khadi and Handloom has increased multiple times as well as its demand. He said there were many times when Khadi India showroom in Delhi did business of more than a crore rupees. 2 October, Pujja Bapu ki Janma Jainti par, hum sab phir se ek baar, ek naya record banayin. Aap apne shahar mein, jahaan bhi Khadi bikti ho, handloom bikta ho, handicraft bikta ho, aur Diwali ka tohar saamne hai, toharo ke mausam ke liye, Khadi, handloom, kuti rudyog se judi, अपनी हर करीदारी वोकल फॉर लोकल इस अभियान को मजबूत करने वाली हो पुराने सारे रिकॉर्ड तोड़ने वाली हो India achieved yet another milestone of administering over 90 crore 51 lakh covid-19 vaccine doses so far in the past 24 hours more than 73 lakh 76000 vaccine doses were administered under the nationwide vaccination drive meanwhile new covid-19 cases also showed a continuous dip as about 22000 cases were reported in the country while around 26000 people recovered in the last 24 hours 244 people lost the battle with COVID during the same period. The Union Health Ministry said the COVID-19 recovery rate in the country now stands at 97.87%. Till now, more than 3 crore 30 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19. Presently, the active case load is over 2 lakh 70,000, which is the lowest in 199 days. The government has said that more than 88 crore 94 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. The health ministry said today that more than 5 crore 38 lakh unutilized vaccine doses are still available with the states, UTs and private hospitals to be administered as part of the nationwide vaccination drive. The government has been supporting the states and union territories by providing them COVID-19 vaccines free of cost. 
Union Minister of Information and Broadcasting and Youth Affairs and Sports. Anurag Singh Thakur said that the strong leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has helped in ensuring free COVID vaccination protection to all citizens in the country in an equitable manner, addressing a public meeting in Panjot Gram Panchayat of Bhuranj Assembly segment today. He said the union government has spent about 35,000 crore rupees for providing vaccines to the people free of cost. He was speaking after inaugurating two upgraded roads under the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana PM GSY on the concluding day of his two-day visit to Hamirpur district of Himachal Pradesh. Mr. Thakur said that during the corona crisis, Prime Minister Modi set an example to the whole world by providing free ration for 15 months to 80 crore people under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana PM GKAY. He further said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi developed the best infrastructure in all the border areas along with the construction of state-of-the-art highways during the past seven years, which has strengthened our security forces on the borders of the country. Mr. Thakur reiterated his appeal to the people to imbibe the mantra of cleanliness in their daily routine. Vice President M. Venkaiah Nadu has called for adopting a multi-pronged strategy to arrest the growing incidence of cancer. He stressed on aggressively campaigning on the need to lead a healthy lifestyle and hold regular health screening camps at the community level. The Vice President made these remarks while inaugurating the PET MRI wing at the State Cancer Institute, Guwahati Medical College and Hospital in Guwahati today. Mr. Naidu spoke about the growing menace of cancer and mentioned that in 2020 alone, nearly 14 lakh new cancer cases were detected in the country, and of those, 52,000 were from Assam alone. He said that cancer treatment should be affordable and people-friendly. Mr. Naidu said smaller cancer treatment centers should be at the district and subdivision level in the whole country, as it will reduce the burden of the patient as well as for the family. He said that there is an urgent need to bring down the cost of cancer treatment. Governor of Assam, Professor Jagdish Mukhi and Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma were present on the occasion. Earlier in a video message to the private satellite channel, the Vice President urged the centre and states to work in a Team India spirit to further improve the health indices. Mr. Naidu also called for bridging disparities in health infrastructure between the urban and rural areas. He urged health experts and youth icons to spread awareness about healthy lifestyles. He lauded the government's flagship scheme, Ayushman Bharat, and said it has brought health assurance to millions of poor families. Chemicals and Fertilizers Minister Mansuk Mandavia will virtually inaugurate the iconic week tomorrow, under which various activities will be organized across the country. Department of Pharmaceuticals will celebrate the iconic week from the 4th to 10th of October with the theme story of Pharma at 75 Future Opportunities. Under Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav, Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana will organize health checkup camps and free distribution of first aid kits at 750 Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Kendras across the country on the 10th of October. It will also conduct Jan Aushadi Paricharcha where Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Kendras owners and distributors will interact with doctors and health workers for spreading awareness on generic drugs. Minority Affairs Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi has said that India's culture, traditions and the constitution has not allowed the thread of unity and diversity to get weakened under any circumstances. Addressing Pandit Deen Dayal Smriti Samman program in New Delhi today, Mr. Nakhvi said, Many obstacles came in the way of inclusive development, but our strength of unity and diversity has ensured that the country move forward on the path of prosperity. He said that even after having various languages, religions, regions, lifestyle, India is united only because of its culture, traditions and strong constitutional values. The minister said that during the last seven years, the government has worked for inclusive empowerment with commitment to constitutional values. It has ensured development with dignity of all sections, including the minorities. As part of the union government's ongoing public outreach program, Union Minister of State for Textiles, Darshana Vikram Jardosh, today visited District Anantanag. 
During her visit, the minister took part in a series of events and activities that witnessed participation of public officials and delegations. She inspected the stalls installed by handicrafts and handloom department and interacted with members of Panchayati Raj institutions. She also visited carpet center Siligam and interacted with artisans and listened to their grievances and demands. Speaking on the occasion, the minister highlighted the measures and initiatives taken by the union government to promote handicraft sector across the country. The minister also interacted with members of self-help groups and entrepreneurs who shared their success stories. She urged them to register their units on GEM portal and other business sites so that the marketing level and customer base of their products are enhanced. Union Minister of State for Education Subhas Sarkar concluded his five-day visit to Kashmir today. He was on a tour to the valley as part of the Union Government's public outreach program. The minister visited various educational institutions and held elaborate deliberations with officials and stakeholders during his extensive tour. Talking to the media upon conclusion of his tour, the minister said that the purpose of the visit was to understand the ground realities of the education sector on the directions of the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is visiting Lucknow on the 5th of October to take part in the Urban Conclave being organized by the state's Urban Development Department and to inaugurate several other urban development schemes. This program, which is to be held at the Indira Gandhi Pratishthan in the state capital, is being organized on the occasion of Azadika Amrit Mahotsav. The Urban Conclave will be for three days. On this occasion, around 75,000 beneficiaries of the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana will be given key. These beneficiaries, who are from different cities of the state, will be given financial assistance of 2.5 lakh rupees each to build houses. The Prime Minister is also expected to interact with the beneficiaries of the PM Awas Yojana. Union Shipping Minister Sarbananda Sonowal has said that under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India is creating a distinct image of a leading player in the shipping sector. Talking to reporters on the sidelines of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations of the Shipping Corporation of India in Mumbai, Mr. Sonawal said that Prime Minister has elucidated that transformation is possible only through transportation. He said as a reason, modes of transportation such as waterways, roadways, railways are being strengthened. The Minister said important steps are being taken to further create a distinct image of India to strengthen connectivity and communication. Speaking on the issue of container shortage, he said that exporters had been assured that the government will extend support to them. The minister said that an aim has been set to take the export to 400 US billion dollars and various ministries like commerce, shipping and external affairs are making efforts in this endeavor. Power Ministry has promulgated the Electricity Transmission System Planning, Development and Recovery of Interstate Transmission Charges Rules 2021. This paves the way for overhauling of transmission system planning towards giving power sector utilities easier access to the electricity transmission network across the country. At present, generating companies apply for long-term access based on their supply tie-ups, while the medium-term and short-term transmission access is acquired within the available margins. Based on the long-term access application, incremental transmission capacity is added. A number of sector developments, such as the increasing focus on renewable energy and the development of the market mechanism, necessitated a review of the existing transmission planning framework based on the LTA. The procurement of Paddy in Haryana and Punjab began today. Union Ministry of Food and Public Distribution wrote a letter to Punjab and Haryana governments in this regard. The letter said Paddy should be procured as per the fair average quality FAQ norms prescribed for the Kharif marketing season 2021-22. President of the 76th session of the UN General Assembly, Abdullah Shahid, has said that he had received two doses of the Covishield vaccine manufactured in India. Covishield vaccine, which has been developed by the British-Swedish pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca, is manufactured in India by the Pune-based Serum Institute of India. At his first press conference, Mr. Shahid said he does not know how many countries would say that Covishield is acceptable or not, but a large portion of the countries have got Covishield. In the program Spotlight, we are broadcasting a special series, Seva or Samarpan, Bisal Sushasan Ke. 
Today, the theme is India's first foreign policy, Vishwa Guru. It showcases Prime Minister Narendra Modi's resolve and dedication to make India a global leader. This program, this special program, can be heard tonight on the FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9:15 p.m. onwards. In our bilingual live phone-in program, Corona Jagrukta series, Lieutenant General Dr. Ved Chaturvedi Sir Gangaram Hospital will be with us today to answer the queries related to Corona virus. This program can. be heard on the FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9:30 p.m. onwards these programs will also be available on our website newsonair.gov.in and on our YouTube channel news on air official so keep listening to all india radio news for the latest developments You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people to make khadi and handicraft products a part of their lives. Says it will strengthen resolve to build Atmanirbhar Bharat. Over 90 crore 51 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered across the country so far. Recovery rate nearing 98%. INB Minister Anurag Singh Thakur says strong leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi helped in ensuring free COVID vaccination protection to all citizens of the country. Vice President Venkaiah Naidu calls for adopting a multi-pronged strategy to arrest the growing incidence of cancer. Union Minister Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi says India's culture, traditions and constitution has not allowed thread of unity in diversity to get weakened under any circumstances. Power Ministry promulgates Electricity Rules 2021 to regulate transmission system planning, development and recovery of interstate transmission charges. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee wins Bhawani Pur by polls in women's cricket. One of the night test match between India and Australia ends in a draw in Queensland and in IPL Royal Challengers Bangalore beat Punjab Kings by 6 runs in Sharjah. Kolkata Knight Riders face Sunrisers Hyderabad. in dubai for quick news updates around the clock follow us on our twitter handle at air news alerts chalo milte hain kuch shuruaat kare chalo ek faisla aaj kare maat nahi आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार वेलकम बैक यू आर लिस्निंग टू द इवनिंग न्यूज ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो In West Bengal, the ruling Trinamool Congress has won all the three assembly constituencies which went to polls on the 30th of September. At Bhavanipur Bypol, the AITC candidate Mamta Banerjee defeated her nearest rival, BJP's Priyanka Thibrawal, by a record margin of 58,835 votes and retained her seat as the Chief Minister of the state. Ms Banerjee got 85263 votes while Ms Tebrawal got 26428 votes CPIM candidate Sri G Biswas was at the third position with 4226 votes In Murshidabad AITC candidate Amirul Islam defeated his nearest rival Zaidur Rahman of INC by over 26000 votes at some Sher Ganj BJP candidate Melan Ghosh was in the third place In Jangipur, Jakir Hossain of the AITC won by over 92,000 votes defeating BJP candidate Sujit Das. Jane Alamia of the RSP was in the third position. In Odisha, the ruling BJD has retained the Pipili assembly seat. In a high profile electoral battle, Rudra Pratap Maharathi of the BJD defeated his nearest BJP rival Ashrit Patnaik by more than 20,000 votes. While Mr. Maharathi got more than 96,000 votes, Mr. Patnaik got a little over 76,000 votes. The Congress candidate finished a distant third with 4,261 votes. 
In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the National Investigation Agency, NIA, today conducted searches at nine places in its ongoing probe in connection with a large-scale transfer of funds from Pakistan to India. The funds are allegedly being transferred through the import of California almonds via the cross-LOC trade routes. The NIA, with the assistance of the JNK police, CRPF and ITBP, conducted searches in the border district of Poonch at the premises of the suspected LOC traders. The agency seized various documents, digital devices and other incriminating materials from the premises of the suspects. In Mumbai, the Narcotics Control Board, NCB, today arrested Aryan Khan, son of Bollywood star Shah Rukh Khan, in the drug abuse case. The NCB has also arrested 10 others after raiding a ray party arranged on a cruise ship off the Mumbai coast yesterday. Banned cytotrophic substances were seized during the raid on Cordelia cruise liners, Empress ship in the mid-sea off the Mumbai coast. Vice President M. Venkaya Nadu has conferred the Assam government's biennial Lokapriya Gopinath Borjaloy Award for the national integration and national contribution at a special function in Guwahati today. The awardees are Assam branch of Kasturba Gandhi National Memorial Trust, German-based Assamese Literatia, Dr. Nirod Kumar Barua, and Shillong Chamber Shore at Srimanta Shankaradeva Kalakshetra. The award carries 5 lakh rupees each, a citation and a Anga Vastram. The Vice President said that Gopinath Bordoloi was a true statesman and we must take inspiration from his works. The Gopinath Bordoloi Award is named after the first Chief Minister of Assam after independence. He was awarded the Bharat Ratna in 1999 posthumously. As part of the Asadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, Niti Aayog's flagship initiative, the Women Entrepreneurship Platform, WEP, will felicitate 75 women achievers with Women Transforming India Awards, WTI 2021. The award, in the fifth year of its inception, will celebrate the contribution of women entrepreneurs through Sashakt or Samarth Bharat by building self-sufficient businesses and overcoming challenges via unique business solutions. The WTI Awards is Niti Aayog's endeavor to recognize and celebrate stories of exceptional women changemakers from across India. The application form is available on wep.gov.in and applications will be accepted till the 31st of December 2021. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events is being organized by the government as part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day. Today is the death anniversary of Kadambini Ganguly, who, along with Chandramukhi Basu, became the first female graduates in India from Bethany College in Kolkata. Kadambini Bose was born in Bhagalpur, British India, modern-day Bangladesh, on July 18, 1861. She was born during the Bengali Renaissance, which was a period of religious, social and educational advancement in the Bengal region from the 19th century to the early 20th century, Kadambini was directly impacted by this cultural movement, as her father was an influential member of the Hindu reformation movement, Brahmo Samaj, as well as co-founder of women's rights organization, Bhagalpur Mahila Samiti. And although this was a time when Indian women had scarce educational opportunities, Kadambini's father understood the importance of education and allowed Kadambini to attend school. After primary school, Kadambini attended India's first college for women, the recently established Banga Mahila Vidyalaya, which later merged with Bethune College. 
The school adopted the Calcutta University entrance exam and in 1879, Kadambini became the first woman to pass this rigorous academic test. Kadambini's success inspired Bethany College to start their first arts program and open up graduate courses. The first classes consisted of only two students, Kadambini and her peer, Chandramukhi Basu. They completed their studies in 1883, becoming the first women to graduate college in India. After graduating, Kadambini married Dwarkanath Ganguly, her mentor and teacher at Bethany College. Dwarkanath, a passionate leader of India's women's rights movement, encouraged his wife to pursue a medical degree. Calcutta Medical College refused to accept Kadambini, but the couple fought hard and she was eventually admitted as their first female medical student. Despite continued resistance from teachers and staff, Kadambini graduated Calcutta Medical College in 1886. Along with Anandi Joshi, Kadambini Ganguly became the first woman in India to study medicine and earn a degree in 1886. While Anandi Joshi studied at the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania in the United States, Ganguly pursued Western medicine at Calcutta Medical College, CMC. Criticism from conservatives opposing female liberation could not hold her back and Kadambini chose to pursue the highest possible medical qualification. She travelled to the United Kingdom in 1892 and received three more doctoral certifications. When she returned to India, she worked as a gynecologist at the Lady Dufferin Hospital and later started her own private practice. Kadambini's busy life as a doctor and mother of eight children did not stop her from playing a role in India's women's rights movement. She was one of the six representatives in the first female delegation of the 1889 Indian National Congress. And in 1906, she helped organize the Women's Conference in Calcutta. She was also extremely active in many other movements, like one that fought to improve work conditions for female Eastern Indian coal miners. After her husband's death in 1898, she practiced medicine in Kolkata till her death in 1923. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar, AIR News Kisan. See you in the next episode tomorrow. To commemorate the occasion of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav as a Jan Utsav, All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in the morning news. Listeners can send their responses to the question over WhatsApp on 88265-46262 or through email on amritmahotsavquiz at prasadbharti.gov.in. In Afghanistan, at least 12 people have been killed and 32 others injured in a blast at a mosque in Kabul today. A spokesperson for the Afghan Interior Ministry said that three people have been detained in connection with the incident. The incident took place in a crowded place at Eidga Mosque in Kabul. The ping ball day and night one of women cricket test match between India and Australia ended in a draw at Karara Oval, Queensland. In reply to India's score of 377 for 8 in their first innings, Australia made 241 for 9 declared, allowing the visitors a 136 run lead. And in IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeated Punjab Kings by 6 runs. At Sharjah, chasing a target of 165 runs set by Bangalore Punjabs could score 158 for the loss of 8 wickets. In another match, which is now underway in Dubai, opting to bat first, Sunrisers Hyderabad were 103 for 8 in 18.2 overs against Kolkata Knight Riders when reports last came in. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital, Delhi, and Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky. Mumbai, Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Vishakhapatnam, Bengaluru, Thiruvananthapuram and Puducherry will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people to make khadi and handicraft products a part of their lives, says it will strengthen resolve to build Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Over 90 crore, 51 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered across the country so far. Recovery rate nearing 98%. 
INB Minister Anurag Singh Thakur says strong leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi help in ensuring free COVID vaccination protection to all citizens of the country. Vice President Venkaiya Naidu calls for adopting a multi-pronged strategy to address the growing incidence of cancer. Union Minister Mukhtar Abbas Nakhvi says India's culture, traditions and constitution has not allowed thread of unity and diversity to get weakened under any circumstances. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee wins the Bhavanipur Bipoles. In women's cricket, one off day and night test match between India and Australia ends in a draw in Queensland. And in IPL, Royal Challengers Bangalore beat Punjab Kings by six runs. In Sharjah, Kolkata Knight Riders face Sunrisers Hyderabad in Dubai. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.